anyway, thank you for being here. Uh, as he said, my name is Randall. Um, the title is You Can Be Neurodivergent, InfoSec, and Thrive. A little, about, a little bit about me. I'm an application security and vulnerability management engineer at Cover My Meds. I have a McKesson counterpart here. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I was diagnosed with being on the autism spectrum and generalized anxiety during the worst moment in the world, during the pandemic. Um, I'm a video game, Lego, and book nerd. I just finished my, I'm 27th, I'm on my 28th book. Probably gonna finish it this afternoon and I'll go on to my 29th book out of 35 for the year. Uh, I'm also a technophile, way too many gaming handhelds. I actually have my Legion Go in my room so I can play Baldur's Gate if I wanted to. Some facts, in 2021, the unemployment rate for college graduates with autism was about 85%, almost 20, uh, almost 20 times the national average, uh, and about 22% of autistic adults are gainfully employed, meaning they can pay their bills and have some sort of money to live on afterwards. Why this topic? Um, there's tons of articles written about how you get an infosec. It's, you can say, 30 days, or take this course, or lie on a resume. Don't do that, it's stupid. Um, there's also a gap of neurodivergent talent within the infosec community. Um, we tend to not go for the big roles because it puts us out there and we don't like being in front of things. Why am I here, essentially? Uh, <laughs> Um, so, not everyone is a front of the house type of person. Again, the question probably comes through your mind, why is he doing this? Because it needs to be talked about. Uh, not everyone is also suited to be a leader as it is currently, meaning you don't have to be that front of the, front of the pack person saying, hey, we're, our team is gonna do this. You can be a support role or a servant leader. Um, we can change what it means to be a manager instead of one person leading and be a, collect, a collective of people. So everyone makes a generalized agreement and they go forth with all of this. And uh, neurodivergent, neurodivergent people get into tech for many reasons. Independence, range of topics, and to be honest, the money's quite well. Um, so you want to work in InfoSec. Um, Many say that InfoSec isn't really an entry-level field. It's quite true, uh, but there are some caveats to that. Um, it's hard to also break into this industry unless you have a connection of some sort. My connection was my manager. I, luckily, I made that connection. It's even harder if you're socially awkward. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> it can also be really difficult if you don't feel like you're a perfect fit. We've all been through job searches where you're like, okay, this doesn't work for me, so I'm not gonna apply for this. I apply for it, because it's just a, basically throwing gel at the wall and see what sticks. Um, like I said on here, open recs for a role is scattershot, and most of the people who put those roles out there don't know what they're talking about. And we also have a particular set of skills, not killing things per se, unless it's a process. Um, we're particularly suited for tech, because in my mind, InfoSec is a puzzle, and you gotta figure out what, how, what pieces go where. Um, I can also typically get through a thought process faster than my neurotypical counterparts, and it freaks them out sometimes, but that's what we're here for. Uh, leadership typically also doesn't have neurodivergent people there. It's mo mainly neurotypicals thinking like, oh, we have to do it this way, this way, this way, but what about the other way? What about combining two into one step instead of the other step? Also, inherent understanding of things is not always good. I don't work well with an incomplete set of instructions. I have to keep telling my manager that, but he'll learn eventually. But which way to go? Um, it's hard to really give confidence, uh, guidance on this. Um, it depends on what you want to do. Do you want to do uh, disaster recovery? Do you want to do forensics? Do you want to do cryptography? As crypto means cryptography, not coins, because that's just stupid. Um, <laughs> there's so many facets, GRC, there's other stuff. Uh, neurodivergent people typically find a thing, latch on until they burn out. So many times, and then they get back to it because that's what we do. Um, and you can change the different specialities within it. 
for instance, I was doing application security. I still do it, but I'm also doing vulnerability management and asset management as well. So you can get, you can move throughout everything. Um, and again, money, everything's expensive, and we like things. So the game is afoot. Let's get your shit together when you're looking for a job. You can What I've done is I created a spreadsheet when I was looking for a job to put things into categories. Who I've spoken to, what stage of the interview process are you in, the company name, and if it's a recruiter, ask for the company because sometimes they're like, oh, it's this, our client. Who is the client? Because I don't want to work for an awful company. Um, ask for a salary, and if it's a job, ask for a job description, if it's a cold call or just a random LinkedIn email, as we all get sometimes. So when you're interviewing, what I generally, generally do if I'm interviewing, I send an email prior to introducing myself and asking for some, some accommodations, like, hey, is it okay if I just, you know, have my camera off for after the initial introduction period? Um, also, if you ask for accommodations, this, and they don't typically give them to you, that can clue you in sometimes on what the environment is like, is like at the actual employer. Um, yeah, if they say no, run. Uh, uh, like I said, if you ask to keep your camera off after the initial intro period, camera fatigue is real. 75% um, of the meetings I'm in at work, my camera's off because I also, I look at myself in the camera and I see myself speaking and like, I look stupid, I stop looking. So I typically try to keep my camera off. Um, and if a person asks for accommodations for dress code, this does not mean show up in jammies. Just be as casual as possible, jeans, button down, or a polo. It's also okay to say no if you don't want a job. If you get to the end and you're like, okay, this isn't really gonna fit for me, it's okay to say no. Um, you're interviewing the company just as, they're, as much as they're interviewing you. You have to make sure you fit there. And if the culture doesn't work or if you feel something's off, then generally your little spidey sense is, is generally true. But also, which one do you go with if you get more than one job interview or job uh, offer? Decision fatigue is also real. That's why some people wear black and brown. Quick and easy, put it on. Or um, so just saw someone tweet out about what their, their wardrobe looks like for Black Hat and DEF CON. It was black or white t-shirt, jeans, and shoes. Decision fatigue, just I know what I'm gonna wear the next day and go on. Um, create a list of pros and cons for the role. So, okay, this has decent benefits for health insurance because medicine is expensive. Um, health and medical, uh, mental health is also pertinent there too. What is their time off policy like? Is it permissive to just take time off when you need it or do you have to accrue it? Um, it, it all depends on what your needs are. And neurodivergent, neurodivergent individuals may take a bit longer to make a decision, so be okay with sitting in that decision process. Don't You don't have to jump to it because, oh, this is a $130,000 job offer. Yeah, but you may get 145,000 next one. So just take the time, think about it, go through the pros and cons. And also, it's okay to negotiate. Why do we just say, yes, okay, they have the money, they're hiring you for a reason. Say, I want more money, or I need extra time off, or I need these accommodations. So, I'm in. He said in his best, best hacker voice. I call this one in-mapping the workplace. I'm hoping most of you know what in-map is. <laughs> if not, it's you in-map a network, you so basically you scan the network, see what's there, open ports, OS, and all that stuff. Uh, micromanagement's not fun. I'm not a child. Um, there's no children in here, so good. Um, it can make you feel like you're not doing your job well or make you feel like you don't know what you're talking about. So that constant nagging imposter syndrome is almost reinforced with something like that. Uh, asking for frequent and constructive feedback. I like to know what I'm doing well and if I can improve even if I'm doing well because there's always room for improvement no matter what it is. Also, making meetings better. I created a Confluence page at work that says how to make meetings better. Turn off your mic if you're not speaking. Don't talk over people. Wait a couple seconds before you respond to someone. If you are on camera, don't pick up your laptop and start running around. That's really distracting. Um, and also, if you send out an invite to a meeting, please include an agenda. Most of us have trauma-based learning of, 
oh shit, we're going to get fired because there's nothing on here and it's an important meeting that happens in 20 minutes. Send an agenda. It's not hard. Um, learn how, and also learning how to self-advocate for yourself. That's quite redundant, but it takes time to learn how to say, this is what I need and be confident in it. And when you finally get a team that supports you and backs you, it makes all the world a difference. Also, be a servant leader. I hate that saying, but it's true. Um, adapt, be adaptive to your team's needs. If you're a leader, lead assuming good intentions. Don't read into people's speech pattern. It, I generally speak with a flat tone. Don't think I'm coming off as being an asshole or, or anything other than I'm answering your question. I'm being direct with you. Uh, things go wrong. Humans are messy. People are going to be messy probably, I don't know, what, 8 o'clock the party starts or something like that? Messy. Um, honesty and trust is key also. If you lose trust with me, it's damn near impossible to get it back. So don't break trust with neurodivergent individuals. People are different, but for me, if trust is broken, good luck. So what's next? When learning, do you go over style or sustenance? That's a Tu Wong Fu reference, if you guys don't know what that movie is. Uh, learning new things is fun, but can be very expensive. Ask me how I know. Several books. Um, one can learn a myriad of ways, books, YouTube videos, training certs, and yeah. I'm guessing people don't understand that reference. That's the king and I, Yul Brenner. Uh, choosing your own adventure. Um, there's no one correct way of learning. Everyone learns completely differently. Um, sometimes I can read a book and say, okay, I think I know what this is. And someone asks me a question from the same exact paragraph. I'm like, what? What, what, what do you mean? And someone has to literally sometimes point it out to what, what they were asking. Um, prescribing a one size fits all learning course leaves out those who don't fit the mold. Thanks, McKesson. <laughs> While there are drawbacks to individual learning, being flexible allows for greater absorption of the knowledge that may or may not be gleaned from it. Um, just randomly going through, clicking through a, this is what a phishing email looks like, doesn't work. How are we going to teach people to look for these instead of just saying, oh, this link looks weird. How about you open up the headers and see, does it say threat sim? Does it come from a different sender? There's different ways to learn about this for the normal person that's not really in technology can figure out, oh, this isn't real. I shouldn't click this. So what's next? Is what's good for the goose good for the gander? What works for one may not work for everyone. The world is quite diverse. As we can see, there's different nationalities, uh, gender identities here, everything. It runs the gamut. Um, understanding this and allowing to call your intentions help to expand your mind. Um, once you realize that you're not the only person in the world and we are a speck in an infinite, infinite reality, and depending on if you believe in the string universe theory, that decision will branch off to other branches. So what happens now or what, even what happens next, we don't know. Neurodivergence doesn't pre present in any one certain way. Um, and also, this industry is in dire need of a shakeup. More women, more people of color, more d d uh, diversity within gender identities. Just everything needs to be changed. No more, sorry, old white men. Come on. And if you've met one person on the spectrum, you've met one person on the spectrum. We are all different. So. If not now, when? Be patient. Take, things take time. Your career is that yours. Uh, things don't happen overnight. If they do, um, you're either from apartheid South Africa or it's a lie. Also, keep moving forward. That's all you can do. So that's about it for me. Um, questions? Yes? Um, Sorry, yeah, so the question was, how do you help your coworkers uh, 
self-advocate for themselves or your manager, how can your manager also help advocate for your you? Is, is a little bit of a, uh, a sidestep of what's happened recently. My manager and I got on a call because something happened and he's like, okay, I understand this is the process you need to go through, but realize that Randall is neurodivergent and things like this kind of are triggering for him. And how can we make sure going forward that people don't misunderstand that he's just saying what he's saying and doesn't mean it awfully or any kind of, um, I can't think of the word right up. Just not being mean to people. Just I'm just making an offhand comment or just being completely direct because people can read into that awfully. But yeah, it's good. Okay. Did I answer your question? Ah, yes. I've, I've been called both direct and abrasive, and it depends on the environment in which it's applied. Like it, it, it completely depends on who you're around and if they're used to that type of engagement or not. If it's both, at the end of the day, go back to like trying to get the right job or the right place. That's always something. Exactly. For the stream, one second. Before the stream, he said um, he's been called direct and or abrasive, and it depends on what the uh, the environment calls for. Um, direct and abrasive is essentially the same thing. Uh, I'm sorry that you read into something that's not there. That's on you. Do you try and figure out what's wrong with you first? And it's not my not my issue. Yes, sir. Uh, you had mentioned accommodations and like having a camera on this one. Can you share some other accommodations that I have you? Yeah, uh, the question was, what other accommodations have I uh, requested for or of other people? Uh, to be honest, those are the only ones. So I, I tried to start at the bare minimum. And it not only helps us neurodivergent individuals, but also helps neurotypical people because you get sidetracked and someone asks a question and someone chimes in on something and you just like, wait, what happened? Where are we going with this conversation? So yeah, it's I started with those base minimum things. Um, I've been trying to branch, branch, branch into more McKesson, like, hey, you can't just throw meetings on calendars without saying what it's for. I understand th some things may be confidential, but try to drop a line somewhere, tell me what it's for so I'm not freaking out. Yeah. I think he was next in the blue shirt. It's normal when you recognize that you are a little start to see that, you know, the people that you are and most people, they don't know they are as well. In your work environment, how do you approach that people and start advocating for them and make them see that they are, they have, or they are them as well, you know, promote and help them from some problems that they know, they know, they not are aware of? The question is, how do you approach people and spread the basically evangelize um, neurodivergent accommodations essentially? Yeah. Okay. Um, good question. I don't know because I've I've been working in my team and then slowly branching out from there with the teams, the engineering teams around me. So, stay tuned. So, what are some green flags and red flags? Question was, what are green and red flags uh, during the search? Um, it depends. Are you colorblind? Um, <laughs> uh, good question. I I don't know to answer that. Uh, typically, if I read through, the one thing is we're a family. I'm sorry. I don't know if we can cuss. No, the fuck we're not. We're coworkers. We're here for a reason. We're going to do a job. We're not, yes, we're a team, we can get along, we can be close friends with inside of work, but once work time stops, it, that connection is severed for me. And like, I'll, I'll be friendly towards people, but I'm not gonna be like, oh, let's go to your house on the weekend. No, I go to my partner's house, sorry. Yeah. Well, I think that the company, they I believe we did, but uh, layoffs. Yeah. 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 DNI. Oh, I've heard DEI, but that might be a pejorative to some. Yeah. Um, I think so. Um, 
the DEI person that was at Comrade Meds was ha let go during what we call the culling or the happening. Um, so there are resource groups, employee resource groups for within like Greater McKesson. It's shit. Um, but with some companies throwing it out because it's a bad word now, looking you tractor supply, um, I, so some may have it, some may not, but I mean, do your research. Uh, glass door reviews are a great thing. Even if some may, may be lying, just Google. Don't, don't LLM it because it'll tell you what you want to hear. Um, I think we're almost close to any other questions. The question is um, disclosing potential disabilities on application paperwork. Uh, it's up to the ap the applicant. You do not have to disclose it if you get into the role and you say, "Hey, I'm asking for these these accommodations for a reason." If they try to push into it, that's that's illegal. They can't ask why. You don't have to disclose your disability. And asking accommodations is good for everyone, not just neurodivergent individuals. Do you, do you think there's, there's actually an industry bias? It's kind of hard to oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Yes, there's bias, absolute bias. I've always been, I don't know the answer. Like, I don't give a guess or a no. I'm looking at it from a personal privacy perspective for all of the questions. Like, it doesn't matter what they're asking at that point. It's not something that is that are made for you. Like, I, I must actually give them a, a qualified response. So, Yeah. Um. Oh. Hello. Hello. You're comfortable talking about being neurodivergent yourself, mm -hmm. but it is also a medical diagnosis. It is. It's just the same as having AIDS or anything else, right? Yes. A lot of people don't want to talk about what their personal stuff is. Yeah. How do you, is it on you to advocate for yourself or do you want, are you comfortable with others within your organization advocating for you? Do you feel like you grant them permission to do it first? Like you said, your boss says, these are triggering for Randall. Others might not be so cool with that. Like, hey boss, I told you that in private. How do you navigate those sort of social situations, I guess? It depends on the trust level with your manager. Because if you don't really trust your manager, you're not going to kind of trust it. Also, I'm comfortable with it because I, I saw the the need for side conversation. Psst. Hey, guys. Gentlemen. Gentlemen, please. Uh, um, I, I talk about it because I saw a need for it. It, it. There was a huge gap in accommodating people because... Technology run goes fast and it goes through people faster. So, I mean, it all depends on what company it is, how, what, like, again, again your manager, how comfortable he is or she is or, or they are with who you are. And it also depends on if you want to actually disclose it. You don't have to. If it helps, do it. But it all depends on who you are in your circumstances. I hope that's a good enough answer. Uh, would it be okay if I provide a second opinion on that sure. question? Um, so a good rule of thumb, if you're dealing with, you're dealing with a specific individual, ask that individual, talk to that person, say, hey, you know, so if you're the person disclosing, say, hey, I'm sharing this with you. I would rather you not share it with anyone or I'm sharing this with you so you can help advocate for me. Um, if you're on the other side and someone has shared with you, make sure and explicitly ask them if they don't say. Say, is this something you'd like me to keep private? Is there something I can do to help advocate for you? What can I do? Do you want to signal me? Do you want me to always do it? Um, and that's true of not just neurodivergence, but anything. If somebody discloses something to you, 
um, and asks for your support. Um, this is something that happens to women a lot in tech is mm -hmm. that um, there's a lot of unasked for support in some areas and then in other areas we're not getting the support we need. So sometimes we need someone to say, hey, did you hear what she just said or what this person just said or whatever. And sometimes that's kind of patronizing and we don't need that. And so talking to the person involved is the most important thing here because everyone is different and every situation is different. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you, Randall, very much. Thank you. Let's give another round of applause.